hello, hello, respective viewers. It's George from Ireland. So welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to comment on um, these conservative attacks on, on Sir Keir Starmer. So the latest line of attack is that Sir Keir, when he was practicing at the bar, was wrong to represent Hizb Tahrir. Hizb Tahrir meaning the party of, of uh, liberation in, in Arabic. So um, it's widely regarded as an Islamist extremist group and it's, it's been prescribed in several uh, countries. So uh, anyway, uh, the um, conservative jingle is call Keir if you're such an unsavory organization and you want legal representation. But it's illogical as well as unethical for the conservative and unionist party to castigate Sakir for this. And he has a very glittering um, career in, at the bar before he entered uh, politics. So it was a distinguished public servant, um, director of the Crown Prosecution Service. So politics aside, uh, I think his politics are monstrous, but I, I do doff the cap to him for all he achieved in his career before entering the, the, the political forum. Um, and that's why he was knighted. So one of the core principles of, of, of justice is that lawyers, they'll represent people whether they like them or dislike them, even if they don't, don't agree uh, with what, what they're up to, because everyone has the right to legal representation. And that includes Hizbut Tahrir. Everyone is everyone. Um, we can't have a uh, case where one side has legal counsel and the other doesn't. There's, many, there's got to be equality of arms. So should this organization be outlawed or not? And that is something that, that's worth having a court hearing about. It would be a very dangerous situation if the government would just um, uh, ban any organization it finds disobliging. You know, environmental protest groups, pro-life groups or whatever, women's rights groups, I can't think, children's rights groups, um, pensioners groups, any sort of uh, protest organization. Uh, all civic activism would be illegal. Any animal, any animal rights organization, whatever, trades unions, these could all be outlawed and they'd just be branded terrorist. Got like Zimbabwe, where the British Broadcasting Corporation was um, declared to be a terrorist organization. Or in Russia, well nigh all is banned as extremist and undesirable and membership of this is punishable by like eight years in prison. Um, so that's why uh, there, was, there was a legal challenge to it. So um, there was a, a legal dispute between um, Germany and Hezbollah Tahrir. So he didn't um, uh, represent them as such, but he did provide them some sort of legal advice. And there's this taxi rack, rack principle. So uh, that's that's what you do. It, uh, is someone a terrorist or not? We don't know until they're being convicted. And they can only be convicted if they have a trial at which the defense as well as the prosecution um, has to have uh, lawyers. So it's a really a childish and facile line of attack. But unfortunately, this is the kind of thing that's going to um, uh, dupe some small-minded and ignorant people. Uh, there, there are always some of those around. So, uh, yeah, that's it. He represents some of these people at all. And he was, yeah, um, director of public prosecution. So, as the Conservatives said, that um, Sakir is immensely proud of his uh, uh, glittering legal career and is very happy to bring this up because he thinks it reflects credit on him. Therefore, it's permissible for the Conservatives to try and use it to reflect discredit on him. And, of course, uh, when his, his tenure of that position was not blameless, perhaps he made a few injudicious decisions, and he can be he can be hauled over the coals for that sort of thing. Um, but uh, that is um, his career. So um, the uh, James cleverly he wants to outlaw his career. I was actually quite surprised to learn that it's not illegal in the United Kingdom already, and I am a little bit worried that too many organisations are declared to be Ill illegal. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, semi-libertarian, but uh, if something really is a criminal conspiracy, then yes, it should be banned. Uh, if something people say, well, it's got distasteful views, they're um, misogynist or racist, or I can't remember, religionist or something like that, so they ought to be uh, forbidden on those grounds. You see, they're, they're I part company, because um, however loathsome their views are, people must be allowed to, to hold these views, to organize, to express themselves. Um, and the danger is, if they can't try to achieve their goals peacefully, hopefully fail, then they're going to try to do so violently. You might say they do so violently already. But you think of um, the Northern Ireland conflict when Sinn Féin was really the IRA with the balaclava off. It effectively was the same organization. But that was not banned. All through the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, when it was openly a cheerleader for terrorism, even then it was allowed. Even though three and a half thousand people were killed in the conflict, 
and the loyalist terrorist organizations, they had their political parties. And, and despite a far greater threat to the United Kingdom back then than there is now, even then, these organizations were not outlawed. So, um, uh, so I don't know what, what Sakir believed whether he believed that um, there was any merit in, in, in his um, uh, case at all, but say, well, if I had to run this argument, these are the ones I think have some sort of legal plausibility to them. So it was really deeply wrong of the Conservative Party to criticise him. And it shows that the Conservative government is floundering and desperately clutching around for some kind of um, halfway reasonable argument, something to tarnish Sir Keir, who's seen as very dull, and there's this word cloud that was published the other day. They asked lots of people, what do you think of Sakir Starmer? And um, seeing how many thousands said this and how many hundreds said that, I think boring was the biggest single word that came up. Um, so, but he's not, he's not really disliked. Whereas um, uh, for, for, for Rishi Sunak, it was rich, um, arrogant, vain, stuff like that, which um, is all true. But people don't really have it in for Sakir Starmer. So he's at least not disliked, um, seen as a safe pair, pair of hands, um, he's not genial. Um, he's rather uncharismatic. Uh, but uh, perhaps that might be suitable after the psychodrama of the last few years with the Conservative leaders sort of playing musical chairs. It might be better to have someone who's on the bland side. Uh, and his speeches are filled with banalities. Uh, all right. So I don't think he'll be representing um, them again. So because, you know, Conservative lawyers will have represented um, uh, people they don't like, they might, they might not agree with, and so on. This is a child custody battle, and you think actually the father should have custody for whatever reason, he's a better parent, but you're the solicitor or barrister got to represent the mother, then you have to argue that person's case to the best of your ability. And the court will decide what the right decision or wrong decision. Obviously, it's not the lawyers who, who make these decisions. And it'd be unethical if they didn't try their best for their client. Imagine if you were a person who's accused of a crime or thought to belong to an organization, which many people think is uh, abominable and not to be outlawed, you would want uh, your lawyer to do her or his um, level best for you. So it really is preposterous to say that um, there's something antisocial, something um, disgraceful about um, Sakir Starmer doing his best for these people. It would be appropriate if he didn't do so. He would have been breaching the ethics of the profession if he didn't do so. Reported the Bar Council no, no, no matter what. Okay, so everybody, thank you so much for my channel, and uh, make sure you subscribe on Patreon, and then you can get access to thousands of uh, articles and videos which are behind the paywall. Furthermore, I would warmly appreciate it if you made a ginormous donation on, on PayPal, georgecallahan79 at gmail.com, and that will help me sustain the channel, because obviously I urgently need those to keep this channel going. And maybe a one day I'll invest in a good camera. Is the picture quality all right? I don't use the uh, microphone very much. Does the sound quality, would that improve things? Would that bring in more viewers? Or do you like it raw like this? All right, goodbye everyone and toodle pip.